So, um, I was just about to start cutting the video you're currently watching. Come to find out, I didn't even make an intro for it. So, um, basically, what you're about to watch is the refurbishment of a Model A starter. I fixed up a starter motor for a fellow Model A -er, and uh, as a thank you, he just gave me that one which he had lying about. You'll see the condition of it and don't wonder why he gave it to me anymore. Anyways, have fun. That's really worth a video. In Germany we call it Schubschraubtriebanlasser. From the last starter I made, I still have a couple of parts that I scavenged, which are, you know, not new, but uh, in better condition than what this thing looks like. And uh, honest to God, I have not done nothing to this other than soak everything in uh, penetrating oil. Um, you can see it's actually started being spinnable by now. And I've pounded off the uh, inspection cover here to see if, you know, inside here is actually still a commutator and lo and behold there is so um, you know I'm thinking why not get this uh, starter switch off here and see if we can get this thing a spin because if it spins then we know we do not have to do any rewinding in there and that's a big plus point yesterday evening I went ahead and uh, gave this a generous amount of a penetrating fluid and you know what why not do this again before even attempting anything and then before I even try to turn these screws I'm going to go ahead go in here and give this a good whack with the hammer maybe several it creates a shock in that direction and makes the stem of the screw actually maybe bounce a little bit in there and that's going to hopefully reduce any rust bonding in there you know it's it looks a little bit like voodoo but i have actually had this work quite a couple of times and so you know rather than mangling the screw and then trying to hammer it i'm just going to hammer it first and now we're going to uh, do the next step which is gradually give this thing a twist. Now I'm leaning on here with my full body weight and then, look, the screw is already coming out. Rather be careful, rather than, you know, have this thing stuck in here, break off and uh, get wrecked. Now if these were still stubborn to get out here, another trick is to go back and forth, back and forth. Uh, that uh, loosens any rust on it too. Just to spin it up on the bench, I would need a 60 amp power source. And I do not have that. However, what I do have is this solar generator, which I can just set to 60, 80 amps as a current limit. And then, you know, everything else, the voltage should uh, regulate itself. Isn't that great? Well, we're going to dig into this anyhow.
Now probably the hardest part of it all will be trying to loosen up these screws. I'm going to start with the worst, which is this one right here. I got all the screws drilled out, they didn't want to cooperate, so I didn't either. Um, now we're going to have to desolder this coupling here in order to get the coils out. Now I'm not going in here with a flame, obviously. Nonetheless, I'm going to heat this torch up. Why, you ask? Well, the OGs of this channel may or may not remember that I made a video a while back, a while back, about these soldering hammers. They're from my great granddad, and they're from a time when you had a forge lit somewhere and put these inside and then did your soldering with them. I tried to uh, demonstrate how to use them, and the video was then called How Not to Use a Soldering Iron, because, well, you might be able to figure out why. I did learn a little bit in the meantime. And by now I am happily able to say that I am capable of operating one of these. The key error that I made is buying this clock. It was uh, having the soldering iron way, way too hot. I heated it up until it was glowing red. And uh, that's too much when you just want to uh, soft solder pieces together. What you actually want is this thing just hot enough to well, melt the solder, obviously. Then you can dress this down, dunk it in some flux, and pre-tin the ends. And once there is tin on here, the soldering operation is just the same as with any old soldering iron. Well, a little heat plus T25 treatment gave these things no chance to stay in there. Although I think that uh, rust has not been as big an issue in here as much more with the heads rusting into the casing. Anyways, the greatest state of chaos is achieved once again successfully, so now we can tidy up a little bit and get ourselves a brief overview of what we've got and how we can make it work. Alright, well, here is the old stuff and here are our spares. You'll see me removing these springs right now because they are pretty rusty and pitted and I don't want to take a chance on those breaking. So I'm going to fill those out and replace them with the spares that I have. 
Now, I was initially going to do a re-riveting on this one and put new shiny brackets into place here. I'm not so sure about that now, because the riveting on the inside looks quite nice, on the outside I cannot really tell, but I suppose if we just quickly clean that up a little bit, as you can see the rivets aren't really corroded any. So, um, yeah, not so sure about that yet. What I'll do is uh, sandblast this whole thing and then evaluate once again. I've got two spare bearings, so I'm going to put one in here and one in here. I have a new Bendix. I'm not so sure if I'm going to use it because people have told me this is a bad quality reproduction and it's not really the type of stuff you should trust in. And judging from the slop of this gear on the shaft, comparing it to this one, this isn't actually that much worse. The field coils, I still don't know if I want to re-wrap them, because the wrapping is obviously quite old and frail. And then dunk them in resin once again, or just dunk them in resin just the way they are. This one I can get away with not having to re-machine it, this is still buttery smooth. I will however clean up the slots in between here, uh, just to, you know, make sure they are indeed separate. And then clean up the shaft over here, obviously, because it is quite rusty and pitted and dinged up. Then we've got some sheet metal here. And, um, well, I will probably be able to reuse this one after sandblasting. It's not going to look nice or anything, but it will work just fine. This here, same story, it is mostly there and complete, so after sandblasting just repaint it, no problem here. We will have to make ourselves a new actuator button. Somebody made himself this nice little doodad out of wood or whatever it is. I'm going to make one out of plastic and then we will also have to machine the extension which screws into the foot pedal. I just can't make you understand I'll always love you darling, come with me So I quickly took the switch of my starter motor apart um, This is just a hollow piece of tube with a thread cut into one end the ends uh, stamped flat and the other end opened up Then you've got this little thing which clearly looks homemade as you can see the proper one is a lot more long yeah, we're, we're going to come up with something a little neater. My heart is yours. What more can I say? You want me to rob a bank? Well, I won't do it. I'd die for you, yeah. I'd even cry for you, yeah. I'd tear the stars down from the skies for you. If that isn't love, well, skip it. It'll have to do. Until the real thing comes along. I've just taken a file and deburred them a little bit. Sharp corners with magnets, not efficient, might not make a big difference. Anyways.
even sandblasting couldn't get this spring-loaded peg here to unstick. Now what this does, I think, or what it's supposed to do anyways, is sit inside this little undercut here so that the uh, Bendix doesn't roll out through vibration and clash into the flywheel while driving along. Now they've put a weight on here so that you know, if it, the starter stops in this orientation, then it will just sit like that. And um, I've taken a look at my supposedly working starter motor and figured something out. You can see the wear mark on the teeth where the flywheel has been engaging the Bendix. So when the gear is all the way over here, then the flywheel would be up until here. And now suppose that the starter stopped in the least convenient spot, like this, where the weight would force it to fall down. It would fall until here, and you've still got four millimeters of space here. So let's just pretend Ford knew what they were doing here, and uh, figured out that even with this sitting somewhere down here, it won't crash. In addition to that, this spring thing doesn't seem to do a whole lot. I can not feel where it engages and where it disengages with the notch. There is no relief here and to be honest gravity and vibration would just shake the gear over this detent. It just, in my opinion, we can just put this into the car and there won't be any harm done. Um, besides, <laughs> this rusted out, sandblasted and who knows how old piece has less play in the shaft than the new reproduction thing has. More or less by accident I also stumbled across a video of a guy taking one of these starter switches apart which had been sticking and explaining why it stuck. Turns out some guy actually machined a peg just like I had done, a round and precise fit in both ends and uh, that's too precise for this one. You need all this wiggle room here in order for the changing geometry of the copper latch while it pivots down not to bind up against a well precisely fitting insulator piece. So what I'm going to do is ruin this fit by uh, machining it down somewhat, file the round major diameter here flat so that it can tilt up and down and that ought to keep my starter switch from binding. To reline these I'm using, well I actually don't know the proper term of it, the fact is you put this at the bottom of your trousers for example to uh, nicen up the seam and the important thing is that they are um, cotton so when we dunk these in hearts uh, then it won't you know, shrink or melt or anything.
Right, the coils are out for dipping. Now the pieces which have been painted are dry. And now I'm going to take out the bushings out of these, replace them with the new ones. I have been soaking them in oil for a few days, so they should be nice and prepared. And I'm also going to take some of the paint back off again, because I've since found out that the only ground connection that the starter gets is through being mounted to the flywheel housing. And if this is all nicely painted, then that's going to, of course, act as an insulator. So we want uh, clear metal over here, clean metal over here, then clean metal where the faceplate mounts onto, and we'll need to clean up the chamfers here where the grounded brush holding screws engage into. The rest can stay the way it is. Sinter bronze is pretty porous, so it likes to break. Luckily, this bushing which came out of this plate is still pretty well within spec. So we'll just pretend that that never happened and uh, press this one in. That must have been the best paint job I've ever made, because I could hardly scrape this off here. Uh, anyways, now it's nice and ugly again from both sides, and uh, should make good continuity when mounted in the car. Start is back together, got a little nasty towards the end there, my apologies, but it turns freely without binding 
Uh, the brushes still make a little clickety clackety noise, but I'm sure that's going to go away once they wear in. And probably by the way that this is chucked in here, you can tell that it's time to test this thing out. So, um, That one concludes this video. Got it back up and running again. And uh, I think what I'm going to do actually, once you know I've got the engine back up and running, is uh, install this one as the main starter. Because you know there is a couple of decisions that I'm sure you're going to doubt about it, like reusing the old Bendix here. Um, but you know, I'm wondering the same thing. So, the best way to see if what I did was any good is to put it right back in action. And uh, should it not work, then I've always got one good starter ready and waiting to be installed. So, that's what we're going to do. Thank you very much for watching. See you guys next time. Bye bye! Mann, das ging doch! Komm jetzt, mach keinen Zinnober. Geh da rein, bitte, ich hab keinen Bock mehr. Ich will einfach nur noch... Ach, keine Ahnung. Also ich will jedenfalls nicht mehr einen Anlass anschrauben.